in what ways is that happening? I mean, obviously you're part of this movement. I mean, how are indigenous peoples who have had their stories told by the colonizers? I mean, in what ways are you seeing that besides just your own work of them telling their own stories of getting their own perspectives and, and work out there? Yeah, what other examples are there, though, that he can point to that we can look at? Mufafa. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. There are people that truly get involved. A lot of uh, media groups getting involved. Independent media. There's us at FAPA that work with this question of human rights. And there's a point that is very interesting, which I think has to be said. And many people, they can't just say, but you have to see. There is also the indigenous people telling their own stories. So I'm there as an ally in this struggle, understanding myself as white, understanding my condition, and allying myself with the struggle of indigenous peoples. But there are also a lot of media groups that are indigenous, and they have a fantastic work. There is a filmmaker, great, great filmmaker, a friend of mine, Kamikia. He's an indigenous filmmaker, which tells that he narrates his own story through documentaries, through videos, and clips, and so on. There are other processes that came before, for example, videos from the communities, in the communities, that tell the stories of the actual indigenous peoples. This is also for me a place that's very interesting. I learn a lot more when I see them telling their own stories. And as an ally, I can contribute in some way to that struggle. But the tendency that I think, not only in the indigenous movement, but any resistance movement, is that people tell their own stories. Then you can tell the story of who's suffering and not of who's attacking or of who's outside of the situation. Okay. And so if you are working to, as an ally with these communities, to tell their stories, to be respectful and understand that they're telling their own stories and you're there to help with that, I mean, how do you do that? I mean, what kind of care do you take to do that in order to tell the stories accurately and respectfully? First of all is to tell the story and give them a name. Give these people their names. I think for a really long time, people treated the indigenous question and the images documented and so on as the indigenous, the people, as if all of them were one. And in reality, it's not one indigenous people. There are many different indigenous peoples. So to give them names and a place, an address, and talk about the territory of each peoples, that's already the basic, the fundamentals which in reality is very important for them and for us to give these people names. Where are they from? Where did they come from? Who are these people? Another aspect is to understand if they are satisfied, if they are satisfied with these images. The idea is to make an exchange. When I go inside an indigenous territory or some community or some indigenous peoples, they call me to their homes. Their indigenous territory is a home. It's their home. If I go inside their home space of where they live, their comfort, I have to have the maximum of respect in how to also tell these stories. It's the care I've been taking throughout the years of my work, which in reality isn't something forced. It's something I comprehend as honest. If I'm going inside their homes, their territory, there's nothing more fair and honest than to explain exactly what it is that I'm doing, exchanging, showing them everything that I'm doing. I get involved, they get involved, I send the final result, they like it, they share. Obviously, there are a lot of indigenous peoples that have Facebook and Instagram, and I follow them and they follow me, and we do this exchange. This is already something I see as, as a crucial point in my work, which I've been taking this care. But something that I put as if it was a rule for all of the people that work with this question of indigenous peoples in Brazil and outside of Brazil, the idea is also that there is a difference between my work and I say also to my comrades and my work partners in my collective that we get involved in the topic. 
So we know the people. We are friends of these people. We have relationships with these people. In a way, this helps us tell these stories, because if you work with human rights and social environmental questions, there needs to be a level of trust, an enormous level of trust. So we put the relationships as something primordial for our photographic work. And this is something that I put as a focal point in my work.